lagi lagi ada itu. All right. Let's see if this works. This does. Hello, selamat siang, everyone. Or it says selamat sore. I never know where the the line is drawn. You don't know either. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, we do it simply. We just say hey in Swedish. That you can say all day around. It makes it easier for everyone. Um, I think uh, it's now a quarter to three, and we should start our presentation then about studying in Sweden. Um, and just to present myself, my name is Gustav Dalin. I'm Deputy Head of Mission at the Swedish Embassy here in Jakarta. Uh, we're living here in Indonesia in Jakarta now for, for two years. Uh, my Bahasa Indonesia is still not good enough to hold this presentation in Bahasa Indonesia, so it will have to be done in English. And I apologize for that beforehand. Uh, but also uh, with me uh, is Aldo, who used to be a student in Sweden and also now works for Business Sweden. Uh, so he's a living example of if you go to Sweden and study, you can continue your life as a semi swede even here in Indonesia when you come back. So, welcome, Aldo. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, short introduction. My name is Aldo. I'm still an active student at Lund University, uh, Master of Science in European Affairs. Uh, right now, I'm doing my internship at Business Sweden, Jakarta. So, yeah, I'm still an active student. Later, I will come back to Lund to continue my study for the thesis. Uh, but for now, we will present you the study in Sweden with this time. Indeed. Um, and so we will spend, I guess, around half an hour talking about Sweden to you. Um, uh, so it will be uh, not so much about the individual universities, but rather about Sweden as a country and how it is to live in Sweden and a bit about studying in there and a bit about how to get to study there, which will mainly be Aldo's part as he has gone through that experience. Um, we'll see if we have time for, for questions, uh, but if not, and even if we do, I would still highly recommend you, if you haven't already been there, to go up to the booths outside the Clippers and study in Sweden and the four different, uh, five different Swedish universities that we have here with representatives so you can ask them more specific questions about their universities. Um, but, so what we would like to start out with, oh, this part, um, is to give you, you know, uh, some basic uh, facts uh, about Sweden as a country. Um, I suppose that you're all in here because you're interested in studying in Sweden, so you know a bit about Sweden, at least roughly where it is on the map. Uh, but still, we'll try to give you uh, a few glimpses of the country. So this is Sweden on the map up in northern uh, Europe, very, very, very far away from Indonesia. Um, so it's uh, it's a country that is. Uh, in some ways quite similar to Indonesia, but in many ways also very, very different. Um, one noticeable fact is that, um, so this blue and yellow area being Sweden is roughly, I have to check my notes, 450,000 square kilometers big. That is roughly the size of the island of Sumatra. So it's, and the shape is a bit Sumatra as well. Right? So you have a similarity there, uh, but Sumatra, you have roughly uh, 50 million people living in Sweden, we are 10 million people. And so, I mean, you could even compare it to Yawa, and then Sweden is bigger than Yawa. Yawa has 150 million people, we have 10. So, we are quite a, a big country, in a sense, geography wise. We're a, we're a very, very small country, population wise. So, if you were to go to Sweden, I think, I think Alu can confirm that's a that's a big difference between Sweden and Indonesia. Yes. Huge difference. I mean, Sweden for the weather itself, it's really cool compared to Indonesia. And then the, uh, culture-wise for the people, uh, it's morally different. Take the example, let's say, if you are going for the public transportation for the bus. In here, you should have like a, like a car to tap if you wanted to go to the bus. But then in Sweden, uh, especially in Lund, you should buy your own ticket, and it's your own responsibility to attend the bus. And people just randomly check where you have the ticket on it. That's just one of the examples. Means you can get away with a lot of cheating, then, if you're lucky. 
<laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Buy your tickets, please. It's very, it's very important. Um, but so, uh, within this quite um, big geography, and among the very few people, uh, we also have uh, 39 outstanding universities where you could go to study, um, five of which, as I said, are represented here at the fair that you can talk more to. Uh, now, one uh, very important thing to know about Sweden, so we, uh, not all, only are we a small country very far away, we also have uh, our own language, Swedish, Svenska in Swedish. Um, it is, um, I found actually, trying to learn Bahasa Indonesia in Indonesia. Uh, it's similar to some extent to Indonesia, we have a lot of the same sounds, so I think you would find that learning Swedish wouldn't be that difficult, at least at some level. But it's also important for you to know that in order to go to Sweden to study, you don't need to learn Swedish. English, as we say here, is all you need. Uh, both will come to that later with the offering of all the, the programs, both the bachelor and master's and PhD level uh, that are taught in English. And also, Swedes in general are very affluent in English, so society works very well in English too. Uh, so it's completely fine for you uh, as a foreign student to come to Sweden and, and only speak uh, English. I don't know if you can confirm all the words. Yes, I mean, all, almost all of the Swedish, uh, they could talk in English fluently. Perhaps only some of the Swedish who, like the elders, who live in remote areas. If you wanted to engage more to Swedes, then you can learn Swedish. Also after this slide, I mean, you will present it. Uh, those who will live in Sweden for more than a year, I mean, if the program is in two years, technically you live in more than one year, then you will be able to learn Swedish from SFT or Svenska for Infrabel or Swedish for immigrants. So you'll be able to to learn Swedish for free. It's from the municip municipalities or from the community. Right, so it is, even though English is enough, there are possibilities to learn Swedish uh, and, and some good reasons to try and do it. Not least if you envision a longer future in Sweden, then Sweden will be useful uh, both for work or for integrating in society. And uh, just like for me as a Swede coming to Indonesia, at least learning a bit of Bahasa Indonesia, you know, will help me interact with, with local people, will show respect to the new country and the new culture I come to it, and will be an additional key for you to, to get to learn uh, Sweden and Sweden's home. So it's, even though English is enough, it's highly recommended that you at least try to learn some Swedish. And as I said, I think you'll find that it's not, it's very different from Bahasa, but it's not that difficult to, uh, to learn, actually, it's Indonesian. All right, uh, moving on from sort of Swedish uh, society and more into the, uh, the details of studying in Sweden. So, as I said, we have a lot of programs on offer in English. Uh, over 100 bachelor programs that are uh, three years long, and then over a thousand master's programs that are both one and two years long. Um, and then, of course, you can even st uh, study at the, uh, at the PhD level, which is a, a bit of a different breed because doing a PhD in, in Sweden is actually more of a, of a job than you will have a salary. So it's also possible to to apply for, for PhD um, positions. What was it that you studied, Aldo? Sorry? What program did you study? I studied European Affairs. It's the, from the Department of Political Science uh, in the Faculty of Social Science at Lund University. Lund University, yes. Right, and this was at the, at the master's level? Yes, master level. Cool. And uh, it apparently did not qualify <laughs> on the list of popular subjects here. Maybe it falls under international relations. So here's a list of, of 
of the, the subjects and the programs that are mostly sought after by international students, biotechnology, business, design, engineering, international relations, IT, life sciences, human rights, sustainability. But that's, that's, that's just a sample of everything that's offered. I would dare to say that anything you would want to study, you can find at the Swedish University. So it's, uh, it's, it's really worth looking into uh, those options. And then, as I said, go talk to the, to the university representatives outside uh, and ask them about uh, what's on offer in their particular universities. Uh, and speaking about the universities, uh, this is where they are in the country. Uh, and as you can see, uh, it's a quite a heavy concentration in the south of Sweden. Um, and uh, even the capital, Stockholm, where I'm from, let's see if I can use this. Wow. Here is Stockholm. There was Stockholm. There it is again. Um, so that's the capital of Sweden, that's where I come from. We tend to think that this is in the, in the middle of Sweden, it's not, it's also in the south. So most of the cities, most of the universities are in the south. Um, concentrated to the big cities, quote unquote. There's no such thing as a big city in Sweden compared to, to, uh, to Indonesia. Uh, you know, uh, Stockholm, the biggest city, the capital, has around a million inhabitants. So, in comparison to Indonesia, these are very, very small cities. Uh, but still, concentrated among the, the bigger cities like Stockholm and Gothenburg and Malmö. And then we have the classic uh, university towns like Lund, where Aldo went, and Uppsala, just north of Stockholm. But there are many, many other different places to go. And I would say that if you as an Indonesian are out to do something very different and have one or two, three years of your life be in a very, very different environment than Indonesia, uh, then, you know, can I get this to work? Sorry, well, I wanted to point to the north. Uh, if you go far up north in Sweden, uh, that will be a very, very different place than Indonesia. Just be prepared that temperatures can go down to like minus 30 degrees. So bring a lot of warm clothes. I guess that goes even if you go to Lund, right? Although yeah. it can get colder yeah. as well. I think the last two years it was minus 20 for the winter. Yeah, so that's a, a 50 degree difference to average Jakarta temperature. So be prepared for that. Uh, but there's a saying in Swedish that goes like, det finns inget dåligt väder, det finns bara dåliga kläder. Meaning, there's no such thing as bad weather, there's only bad clothing. If you have that in mind, you can survive anything in Sweden, I promise. It'll be a shock at first, but you'll, you'll get used to it. Um, so I would, you know, other than looking for, for a good university to study, I would also, if I were you, look into an option to go somewhere that gives you a, a very, very different cultural experience. Anywhere you go in Sweden will give you that, but especially if you go far up in the north, like Kiruna, you will see far, far, far up in the north. That's probably as far away from Indonesia as you can possibly go in the world. Anything you would like to add to this? I'll do from your own experience. If I may, then uh, I would like to deliver my experience uh, since I'm studying at the Swedish University, at Lund University. It's really different, uh, the education system. Uh, in general, in Indonesia, the lecturer will deliver the materials and then after that, in the end of the session, they will open for the Q&A, then we can ask the questions. Uh, but then in Sweden, you are free anytime. If you wanted to ask, being critical, you wanted to ask something, just raise your hand or just directly say it to your lectures. And then there are a lot of group works, so they will uh, assign you into groups, and you have to, how to say, like, elaborate about the theories and discuss about the materials with your peers and then later the lecturer will give you like a case study for you to discuss further. Um, from my experience, uh, one of my courses is really unique, I would say. So we're assigned into groups. We are free to go to the like a park or anywhere that we wanted to go or think uh, for having the coffee or something like that. 
discuss about the materials. And then the one who made the presentation is the lecturer himself. And he appoints uh, the one who read the materials to explain further. So it's kind of a way for us to learn more about the materials. If we're not learning, then we're just you know, like prompted with that silence. Yeah, but it's great you point that out. I think that's also something that might strike you if you come to Sweden. That it's a very, um, we like to think, very equal, uh, very flat society. We have worked for many, many decades, if not even centuries, to try and get rid of as many of the hierarchies in society uh, as we can. So you will notice that in university, where you don't have to call your professor professor, you, you're on a first name basis with everyone, uh, so that goes within university and it goes within uh, society at large. Uh, so this hopefully comes with a great sense of uh, freedom and equality, but it comes with uh, a requirement of responsibility, I would say, as well. That's true, that's true. Um, both in the university world and like, well, you gave the example of, the, of riding the bus, right? So you're very few times people will check if you have a ticket or not, but you're expected to take your own responsibility and always pay for your ticket anyway. Yeah, I mean, also for the education in general, uh, if you feel like your readings, for example, the syllable, is not really relevant or even the, the readings, the books are out, out of date, so they need to, how to say, make it up to date have a new book or another one that is even more useful, then feel free to say to your lectures or the program coordinators. So the freedom is there. Yes, so make use of it if or when you go to, to Sweden. Um, short mentioning of the application process, not very uh, advanced. Uh, you do your applications on universityadmissions.se uh, where you can apply for four master's programs or eight bachelor's programs. Um, uh, it's important there, I just learned from Aldo to consider which one uh, you put at the top. Uh, Aldo will come back to this, but this influences your possibility of applying for scholarships. But I'll let you comment on that later. Uh, so mid-January, this is the important date, uh, it's the application deadline. Uh, don't hand in your applications too late, don't wait uh, until the night or the final day to hand in your application. Take it from my experience, it's better to do it uh, before then. Then you'll have to wait until April to know your uh, 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 admission results, which of these programs you get into. Then you can start with all the practical preparations of going to Sweden, getting your scholarships, getting your coming to us at the Swedish Embassy to apply for your residence permit and so on. That will take a while and depending on, 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 on your university and your program, sometime in late August the, the academic year starts. It's probably advisable uh, to try and be in Sweden a bit ahead of, of time. There's usually some preparatory student organization things going on that you might want to just to get accustomed to Sweden and, and the minus 30 degrees that you will have to live in, uh, or yeah, well, depending on where you go. And it's rarely that, rarely that cold in August. That is, after all, summer in Sweden. Uh, am I right to say that, that it's good to go early? Yeah, exactly. Also for the universities, they have the, how to say it, like the orientation day. So they will have to assign people from the universities, the respective uh, representations. They will escort you once you arrive in Sweden, whether you are arrived from Copenhagen, if you're going to Lund or Malmö, uh, or Stockholm. So they will escort you to your ac uh, accommodations and then the things that you need to prepare for your study. So yeah, that's good to be ahead. Very good. And uh, these are the English language requirements for studying in Sweden. So this is quite uh, important to know. I'm not going to go through all these numbers. Uh, you can also find them at studyinsweden.se. Uh, but it's good to note that there are certain formal requirements of how 
good your English needs to be in order to be admitted to a Swedish university. Uh, but although you just informed me that there's, you might another, not need this. Yeah. Another another way. Um, so back in my bachelor degree, I studied at Preston University, uh, one of the university that deliver the courses fully in English. So you can go without IELTS or Google if your um, whole bachelor or bachelor courses are taught in English. But it's supposed to be written on your transcript that it is delivered fully in English and the university itself is listed at WHED or World Higher Education Database that it's conducted in English. So you can just upload your transcript and the bachelor degree. Okay, cool. So that's good for you to know. Maybe to check if you're studying your bachelor's already, if if you can meet those requirements that way. Now, the subject that people tend to be mostly interested in when it comes to studying in Sweden or studying anywhere, I suppose, is, uh, well, tuition fees is one. Uh, here you see what the average master's of bachelor program costs. Uh, so it's around 12,000 euros or 200 million Indonesian rupiah. Um, and this is for students like yourself that come from outside the EU EEA area. But of course, in order to finance this, let's see if we get, yeah, that's the important part, the scholarships. And Aldo, you're the scholarship expert, so I'll let you, I'll let you take it from here. Okay, thank you, Mr. Uh, yes, for the scholarships, uh, studying in Sweden, you have three ways, if I could be honest with you. Uh, the first is LPDP, or the scholarship from the Indonesian government. Second one is the university scholarships. Before Gustav mentioned that the master, uh, master courses, oh, sorry, master programs, you could choose up to four master programs. But it is important to prioritize which one is the first uh, priority or the first selection. Because that will define the university scholarships. So just for example, if I choose Lund University as my first priority, then I will be eligible to apply for the scholarships from Lund University, called Lund University Global Scholarships. Um, another, let's say if you are having KTH in your first selection, then you'll be eligible for the university scholarships. Please note that the university scholarships is partial, so it only covers your tuition fee, not the living cost. But then for Swedish Institute Scholarships or SI Scholarship, they will cover fully from the tuition fee up to the living cost. Yeah, this is the network that you will have. Um, the NFGL, Global Leaders, Future Global Leaders. That, that, that's the one that you will be linked to as a, one of the award. Next. We could just proceed maybe to the benefits and the requirements. Yeah. Indonesia is one of them, so you, we will be eligible for the scholarships. And what are the benefits? The first, they will cover the tuition fee, as I mentioned, and then the living expenses, 11,000 per month, uh, and then travel grant. This is one time. This is one time only. It's for the tickets uh, for you to go to Sweden and get back to Indonesia. The insurance, uh, NFGL as mentioned, it's the network and then the membership itself as the SI alumni network. And then next. Yeah, what are the criteria and the requirements? Uh, the first the criteria here, the work experience, you must have minimum 3,000 hours, uh, roughly like two, two years of the experience, work experience country citizenship uh, and you have to be admitted from one of the program that you chose before. So if it's four, it doesn't matter if you are being like the fourth selection, as long as you have been admitted to one of the program that you apply, then you will be eligible for the SI scholarship. And then also having the leadership experience. Yes, uh, for the portal itself, it goes parallel with the university. So in the university uh, portal, 
will open from the October until January. And then the portal for the university scholarships, also for the SI scholarship, they will be open on February for two weeks. Uh, and then the, the results for the admission goes to uh, the beginning of April, as Gustav mentioned. And by mid of April, it will be the announcement for SI scholarship. Yes, these are the required documents that you should take note or you can see it later from SI.SE. Uh, it's the CV, letter of reference, uh, work experience, leadership experience. These documents could be downloaded, the template that you should use from SI.SE. SI. 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 Sorry. SI.SE. And for the motivation letter, for this year, it will be us directly in the application portal. It's tricky and challenging because the motivation letter is only 1,000 characters, including space. So it's 150 words, more or less. Keep it short and simple. Yes. And there's no interview. All right. Was there anything more about the... No. Yes. Uh, perhaps I just wanted to highlight for the SI scholarship itself because as for its name, it's Global Professionals, so they aim for the professionals. That's why you should have the experience, the work experience for more or less two years. And then they stand out for the Sustainable Development Goals. So looking for the, uh, the awardees from Indonesia, last year it was 10 persons and four of them are female. Them. So they stand up for the sustainable development goals, and in that case, it's equality. Very good. Equality and gender equality is an important thing. Um, just a note: we were mentioning before the interest of learning Swedish to be able to to work in Sweden. Uh, you are allowed to work during your studies in Sweden. Um, and you can also stay for 12 months after your studies to find a job in Sweden if you would be interested uh, in that. Uh, it's probably worth noting that, I mean, you're still required and expected to study full time and that will take full time. So uh, be mindful of that when you think about maybe working alongside your, your studies in Sweden. Also, uh, we, this comes back to the language issue, uh, yeah, the number of jobs you can get at least as a student in Sweden only speaking English are a bit limited. Uh, so for that reason it might be good either to learn um, Swedish, a bit of Swedish, or to think about or investigate already now what jobs might be available. Although I would encourage you, you know, focus on your studies first, fo focus on experiencing Sweden first if you go to Sweden, if you have the opportunity to uh, to work on the side of course that's a, that's a nice bonus yeah perhaps i want to add uh, one interesting fact from si scholarship that if you've been admitted for the one year program from si scholarship if you get the internship or work upon your graduation then your monthly how to say monthly stipend it will be extended for six months. So it's good for you to, as a bridge from the study for the career. That's true. That's good. That's and I think if you, if you guys have further uh, questions regarding studying in Sweden, due to the limit time, limited time, perhaps you could find the study in Sweden booth or other respective universities. Right? Gustav? Yes, that's true. Or uh, you check out the information online, of course. Uh, studying Sweden.se, there are different YouTube, Facebook, Instagram channels. Please, if you're interested, follow us, the Embassy of Sweden in Jakarta, uh, on, uh, uh, on Instagram at Sweden in Jakarta. We inform a lot about, uh, uh, both about studying in Sweden, but various other things that we do as an embassy that might be of interest to you if you are interested in Sweden. Also, please follow or join when you go to Sweden uh, PPI Swedia, the organization for Indonesian students in Sweden, and also Alumni Swedia, uh, the organization to join when you come back to Indonesia after having studied in, in, in Sweden. Because to us, 
we want you to go to Sweden to study. We want you to learn more about Sweden. We uh, want you to, to, to bridge between Sweden and Indonesia. But not only for the time that you are in Sweden studying, but we want you also either to stay in Sweden and have your lives and careers there, or to come back in Indonesia and continue that exchange between our two countries. So for us, this is only uh, the beginning, hopefully, of a lifelong journey for you. By that, we'd like to thank, thank you. I think our time is up. So we'll direct uh, questions to go find the boots outside. Go find my colleague, Amretta, who's the expert in all things this. So she will be able to answer all the questions or the uh, university representatives. Uh, or, uh, since we have another great European Nordic country coming up, stay here and listen to our great friends from, from Finland, who will present another fantastic country to work and study. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.